Today, I'm gonna to be filming a video that has been long overdue, and that's how to cope with anxiety, stress, and overwhelm after your breakup. And if you stick around until the very end of this video, I'm gonna give you four real life tips that we have recommended to our clients that have actually worked. No more of this, hey, do this thing without really testing it. I'm talking about tips that we have actually seen positive results with. But as always, if you're in a situation where you're sitting there and wondering if you even should be trying to get your ex back, I've got great news for you. I've actually put together a special quiz on my website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com, that's designed to answer this exact question. We basically ask you many different questions about how you are, how your ex is, and what your relationship was like. And then, and then using that data, we were able to give you an approximate idea of what kind of chance you should be having when it comes to getting your ex back. So you can make a determination if it's the right move or not. Now, if you're interested in taking this quiz, it's really simple. All you have to do is simply look in the description link below this YouTube video and click on it. See, super simple. Okay, so when we talk about anxiety after a breakup, what is it that we're exactly pinpointing? Well, anxiety has many different results, if you will. For some, they can overly obsess about the breakup with their ex. For others, they can go through the five stages of grief, you know, anger, denial, that whole spiel. Others may find themselves completely depressed and really not wanting to do anything. For some, it could be a challenge to get out of bed. For others, you can nonstop think about your ex. Is he sleeping with someone else? Is she with someone else? These are all results of the seed of anxiety. Now, one thing is certain, no matter your goal, whether you wanna get your ex back or simply move on and get over your ex, it's gonna be pretty hard to do if you haven't mastered your own anxiety. But what's kind of always annoyed me when it comes to people who are writing articles or filming videos in this area is they don't give you specifics. They're telling you age old advice without showing you if it actually works. Well, I'm not gonna do that. Instead today, we're gonna be showing you four of the best tips that we've actually recommended to our own clients and have gotten positive feedback from. Tip number one, action versus inaction. Have you ever just woke up one day and didn't feel like going to work? But you know that you have to, so you roll out of bed, you take your shower, you get your work clothes on, you start and get ready to go to work or even school. Next thing you know, as you're engaging in activities throughout your work day or school day, you get kind of into it. And you start thinking back to the moment of when you woke up and you didn't want to do anything. You sit there and wonder, wait, why didn't I want to do this in the first place? What we have here is a situation where you have created momentum for yourself because you went in action. You actually did something. Even though you didn't want to do it, you did it. And next thing you know, you're in a good mood. Now let's swap that scenario for one in which you've just gone through one of the most devastating breakups of your life. It has hurt you deeply, you're depressed, you're overly obsessive, and you definitely don't want to get out of bed. Well, what we found is that our clients who give in to their immediate needs as opposed to what's best for them in the long run have pretty difficult times getting over the anxiety that they're experiencing during the breakup. I'm a big believer in taking action. Sometimes I'll even tell my clients it's better to take action and do something wrong than it is to do nothing at all. Because if you're doing something where you're taking an action, you feel you have some sort of control over the situation and what otherwise may be an uncontrollable situation. But when it comes to a breakup and the anxiety that you're experiencing, oftentimes when I'm talking about action, I'm saying get in movement. Go for a run, work out, do something physical. It has been proven not only by science, but also by our own internal research that our clients who are consistently working out, going for runs, have a better time of coping with the anxiety that they're feeling. Tip number two, journaling, but the right way. 
Here's a little known fact. Most people who recommend journaling, meaning you take out a diary and write your feelings down, are recommending the wrong thing to do. Believe it or not, there is a right way to journal and a wrong way to journal. And if you really think about it, it can make sense in the context in which journaling is being used. Think about it for a moment. You sit down after a breakup and you start journaling. You start listing out how bad you feel, the anxiety that you're feeling, in a way that only reinforces the negative thoughts that you're feeling. Compare that to someone who journals in a different way. Instead of writing all the negative thoughts that they're feeling, they start writing all the positive things that they're feeling, all of the positive goals that they're going to set. It's almost like a mantra. They sit down and say, you know what, I'm gonna get over this breakup, or you know what, I'm gonna get him back, or you know what, I'm gonna get her back. Believe it or not, this practice is the right way to journal. You wanna reinforce positive thoughts instead of negative ones, because it has been proven by psychologists that if you journal and only talk about the bad things, it can actually make you feel worse. Tip number three, rewire your thought pattern. This is perhaps my most favorite shirt that I own. It says, change the paradigm, but it's written upside down, reinforcing that you need to look at life in a different way. Now, if you're an avid watcher of my YouTube channel or even a reader of my articles on ex-boyfriend recovery, you may have heard me talking or writing about the fact that most exes, when they break up with you, enter into this victim mentality. But also what I failed to talk about or maybe reinforce is that you yourself sometimes fall victim to this victim mentality. Now, Bruce Lee famously said, when you find yourself locked in a room surrounded by your enemies, you should tell yourself, I am not locked in here with you. You are locked in here with me. This is the kind of mindset you should have if you want to succeed in life. Get rid of that victim mentality. Every day I get hundreds of comments, emails, Facebook messages, all telling me that I need to help them win their exes back. I need to help them get over their ex. Sometimes if people are lucky enough or I feel like I'm in the mood to do it, I'll respond to some of these questions. And what I can't help but notice is how often I see the words, I can't. I can't do this. I can't lose. It's funny, but you never actually see the words, I can. And I think this is an important thing to point out because not only are people shooting themselves in the foot before they attempt to try to get over their ex or deal with their anxiety or even get their ex back, they've already defeated themselves in their minds. You'll notice if you're going through a really anxious time or you're extremely sad, you're gonna have all these internal thoughts. I'm not sure I'll ever get him back. I'm not sure if things will ever be the same. I don't think it's possible to get him back. All of these things you're telling yourself and actually starting to believe them. What I'm suggesting is that you find a way to reframe or rephrase those internal thoughts. Instead of talking about the fact that you won't ever be able to get your ex back, maybe instead say to yourself, you know what, it's going to be hard, but I'm gonna give it everything I have. And if I don't succeed, at least I can go to bed knowing I left everything out there. This is an important thing to do because not only will you defeat yourself if you believe that you won't be able to have success, but if you rephrase the way you're saying it or thinking it and acknowledge the fact that it won't be easy but success is possible, you put yourself in a strength mindset. Now, speaking of strength mindsets, tip number four, utilize the Holy Trinity. Life is too big to encompass in just three simple categories, but if you were to look at your life and try to categorize it using only three, what would those categories look like? Well, most often they would fall into these following categories, health, wealth, and relationships. Now I have coined these three categories as the ultimate, the holy trinity. So essentially, what you'll notice is that these three categories, health, wealth, and relationship, have this interesting synergy working between them. For example, if your health goes up, your wealth can also go up as well. If your wealth goes up, your relationships can go up. If your wealth goes up, your also health can go up. If your health goes down, wealth can go down. If relationships go down, wealth can go down and health can go down. Let's take your situation for instance. 
Chances are, if you're watching this video and you've gotten to this point, you are going through a breakup and you are having a hard time with how anxious you are feeling. That means your relationships aspect has probably taken a few hits. Now, I would be willing to bet that your wealth and your health have also taken negative hits as well as your other relationship outside the intimate relationship you had with your ex. It's almost as if this one breakup just includes all areas of your life. It's created what we like to call a downward spiral, this domino effect where you just can't seem to get anything right. What you need instead is to create an upward spiral. Because if it's true that there's a synergy between these three areas of your life, it's also true that there's a synergy positively if you affect the other areas positively. For example, maybe you look at the thing that you have full control over, your health, what you're eating, how you're working out, what you're doing to make sure that your mind is healthy. And you'll find that this has an interesting impact on wealth. You're a lot more motivated to go into work. You're a lot more motivated to find work. As you find work, you'll notice that your relationships improve. You start meeting new people, and sometimes these new people give you more confidence. And next thing you know, you have this incredible aura. Your ex takes notice. This is the proper way in which you should handle the Holy Trinity after a breakup. Hey, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. Hopefully you learned a lot about how to overcome some of the anxious feelings that you're feeling after your breakup. Now, I'm pretty sure that there's a lot more that you can do, things that I haven't even touched on. Now, if you know a few of those things, share them below in the comments, because not only will it help make this video more successful, but you'll help make the other people watching the video more successful. Oh, and again, if you haven't already, make sure you stop by our website, www.exboyfriendrecovery.com and take our ex recovery chances quiz so that you can figure out what kind of chance you have of getting your ex back. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.